The vector A and the scalar that goes with it, phi, are important physical quantities. And their importance grows as you become more and more into the quantum theory. The entire theory of quantum electrodynamics has the vector and scalar potentials as the fundamental laws, and the equations for those are the equations that replace the Maxwell equations because the E and the B are slowly disappear as the physics becomes more modern and they're replaced by A and phi. Thank you. The situation is as it always is when we're near the answer. It looks much simpler than it has any right to be. And we have to understand that simplicity. And why we think it must be more complicated. Our minds are com complicated somehow. Just like the, the orbits of the planets, which were supposed to be circles, which looked simple. And they were experimentally, they weren't circles. So they made circles on circles on circles on circles. It got more and more complicated. It turned out it was really much simpler. It was a force inversely as the square of the distance. Which made ellipses and so on. But a different way of formulating entirely, which was beautiful. So now we have our wheels within wheels. We, it looks simple. It, nature is no doubt simpler than all our thoughts about it now. And the question is, what way do we have to think about it so that we understand its simplicity? That's where we stand now. Hi everybody, um, what you can see here is these two coils are wound uh, in the way that I've just mentioned. Uh, this is an, a MEG type arrangement, I've got a permanent set of permanent magnets in the middle, so the flux essentially goes both paths. These um, start an oscillation of the flux between the two paths. This is a dead shorted coil, um, it's a dead shorted set of coils. The coil on this side is my input coil from the amplifier, driven by a sine wave oscillator. The input to the amplifier, 12 volt, 12.6 volts, 1.2 amps. The sine wave across the across the coils, across the sine, uh, across the oscillating coils, is shown, and that's my load. Here, which is connected to this coil over here. So I'll show you the oscillation that I'm talking about. Now with the with everything connected like this and with the coil shorted the light has more output on it. So if I disconnect it, connect it, disconnect it, connect it, and you can see over here there's no difference on the input. The input doesn't go up when I connect it or disconnect it. So connected, disconnected. Now it's a little bit like the flux gate magnetometer. It will um, if the, the input, if you like, will oscillate just a little bit in, in between the connections and disconnections. They're so connected, disconnected. I'll go back up. Um, 
at the moment I would estimate the output on the light. Now this light is only a 12 volt 300 milliamp light uh, and as you can see it's not glowing at full brightness at the moment. Um, but at the moment this device does prove a concept. It does prove that short circuited coils can be wired and connected, wound wired and connected, um, any configuration to assist in a self-oscillation. The oscillation is self-assisted by these two coils.